Welcome to our new video, where we delve into some legal practices that, according to a recent Reddit discussion, should have been outlawed long ago. One glaring omission in the discussion was multi-level marketing, a pyramid scheme that operates within a legal loophole. Join us as we explore the top concerns raised by Reddit users. First up, the practice of declawing cats. This procedure, deemed unethical by many, inflicts severe pain on cats and it can lead to both short-term and long-term health risks, not to mention the negative impact on their mental well-being. Both the ASPCA and the Humane Society strongly oppose this practice. Next, we look at the issue of corporations buying up single-family homes. This trend has raised concerns about the future of affordable housing as individuals struggle to compete against corporations with deep pockets. Many believe that the government should step in to regulate this. Alcohol, despite its legal status, also made the list. With drunk driving causing over 15,000 deaths annually in the US alone, some suggest that prohibition should be reconsidered. The World Health Organization attributes more than 3 million deaths a year to alcohol. Another controversial issue is the ownership of stocks by Congress members while legislating. Critics argue that this amounts to insider trading, and there's a growing call for laws to prevent members of Congress and their families from owning or trading stocks while in office. Price gouging, especially during crises like the pandemic, is another practice that many believe should be outlawed. The sudden increase in prices due to supply chain issues has left a lasting impact with prices remaining high even after the crisis has passed. Spam emails, though less critical, are a common annoyance. The energy consumption of sending these unwanted emails is another factor that infuriates many. Child beauty pageants have been criticized for promoting unhealthy beauty standards and competition among young girls. Critics argue that these events teach girls to value their looks over their abilities or character. Lobbying in government is another contentious issue. Critics argue that this practice undermines democracy by allowing corporations and wealthy individuals to exert undue influence over lawmakers. The complexity of unsubscribing from email lists is another practice that frustrates many. Critics argue that it should be easier to opt out of services and subscriptions. Payday loans with their high interest rates are viewed as predatory. Many believe that these loans should be regulated more strictly or even outlawed. Family vlogging, particularly when it involves the exploitation of children, is another practice that has faced criticism. Many believe that such practices should be regulated to protect children's privacy and well-being. Finally, we look at data tracking and targeted advertisements. While some find these practices convenient, others are concerned about the privacy implications and the commercialization of personal data. Our last topic for today is robo-telemarketing. These unwanted automated calls are not only annoying, but also invasive and potentially dangerous due to the risk of scams. It's clear that many believe this practice should be outlawed. Imagine a world where doctors charge inflated rates for their services, not because they're worth more, but because insurance companies negotiate these prices. Now imagine you're uninsured, left to bear the brunt of these inflated bills, struggling to stay afloat financially. Many believe this practice should be illegal, as it takes advantage of those who can least afford it. Your assets are seized by law enforcement, not because you've been charged with a crime, but merely because you're suspected of one. This is the reality of civil asset forfeiture, a practice many see as a glaring loophole in the constitutional rights of US citizens. Critics argue that property cannot commit a crime, thus asset forfeiture without a trial and verdict should not exist. Timeshares, a seemingly attractive vacation solution, are often viewed as a gateway to legalized fraud. Salespeople are accused of trapping potential clients in manipulative presentations, concealing the high costs associated with these vacation shares. Critics argue that timeshares are nothing more than pricey rentals, not actual investments. Imagine being bombarded with non-stop drug advertisements on your TV, promoting medicines by their brand names. This is a common occurrence in the US, leading some to label the country as a corporate-controlled society. Critics argue that this commercialization of pharmaceuticals is both strange and eerie. Despite the clear correlation between tanning beds and cancer, many young women and even former presidents continue to use them for an unnatural orange glow. Critics argue that the health risks associated with tanning beds are too significant to ignore and the practice should be abolished. Subrogation, 
a practice where health insurance companies recoup the money they've paid out on a person's medical bills by seizing their settlement, is often seen as a form of theft. Critics argue that this practice is particularly unjust for those who have been diligently paying for health insurance. While not a concern for the average person, the relentless pursuit of celebrities by paparazzi is a widely criticized practice. Despite anti-stalking laws, paparazzi are legally allowed to harass and profit off individuals' images without their consent. Critics argue that this should be made illegal. Conversion therapy, a pseudoscientific practice aimed at changing an individual's sexual orientation or gender identity, is widely condemned. Critics argue that sexuality is not a choice and that this harmful practice should be outlawed. For-profit prisons, seen as a blatant conflict of interest, are a contentious issue. Critics argue that these institutions prioritize profit over the welfare of inmates, leading to a host of ethical concerns. Some wealthy individuals exploit loopholes to avoid paying taxes, a practice many view as criminal. Critics argue that this is not only unfair, but also detrimental to the funding of essential services like schools. Many argue that it's high time for churches to start paying their fair share in taxes, Critics point out that a significant portion of the funds they raise often goes towards administration rather than their stated causes. The Church of Scientology is often criticized for its tax-exempt status, which some believe is exploited to avoid paying taxes. Critics also accuse the organization of member abuse and deceptive practices. Universities charging fees for accessing one's own official school transcripts is seen as unjust. Critics argue that these documents belong to the students and should be freely accessible. Imagine being charged extra just to pay your bills. This is the reality of convenience fees, a practice many see as a scam. Critics argue that these fees are unjustified and should be made illegal. If you liked this video, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so we can provide you all the latest viral content.